You know, as I was in church today sitting and listening to some of the different comments being made in the adult Sunday school class regarding the signs they believed were of the end times, it was pretty typical of what uh, most believe throughout the world. For the most part, many were saying that they believed that the Lord was about ready to come because of what was going on in the world, such as what the U.S. President, uh, Mr. Obama, and his wicked uh, decisions that he's made over the last several years. And certainly what has gone on, have been going on as far as uh, the police shootings and the other various things that have happened in law enforcement. And let's not forget ISIS and uh, transgender rulings and, and things of that nature. You know, um, there's one thing that we should all remember in regards to some of the rulings that the uh, Supreme Court makes. And this was uh, reinforced today by an individual I was talking to who reminded me that it's not the Supreme Court that makes laws, but Congress who makes laws. Now, the Supreme Court can strike something down as unconstitutional, but they can't uh, create any laws. But they're still a very powerful body of uh, people. That's why it's very important to understand as we come into the election for president, let's face it, the president is not going to do anything mind-blowing except for one thing. While he is in office, he gets the ability to select judges and Supreme Court justices. And the fact of the matter is that they, these justices uh, play a big part in shaping how conservative or how liberal this country will become over the next four to eight years. So putting in another liberal such as Hillary Clinton would most certainly turn the uh, tide as far as the Supreme Court is concerned. You know, I know a lot of people are worried about Donald Trump and some of the crazy things that he's said and done, but the truth of the matter is he only has so much power, and the bottom line is, is that he won't be able to push his way around in Congress, nor will he be able to push his way around uh, around the world. And let's face it, we can't get any uh, worse as far as uh, foreign policy is con concerned. I mean, we're already uh, in a Cold War battle with uh, both directly China and Russia, and I don't think our relationship with Israel can get any worse at this point in time. So the, the, there's a, there are three nuclear-powered uh, nations that we simply don't have a very good relationship with. And frankly, if you're keeping count, that's actually number two, number three, and possibly uh, Israel could be in the top ten that we're on the back burner with. And the way things are going with Russia and both China, we seem to be pushing both of their buttons. And the buildup on both uh, Russia's borders and also in South China Sea, which I've read many an article that indicated that there could possibly be an accidental war. And those are two nations you don't want to have an accidental war with. And when I say that, I mean China and Russia. I don't, I don't see us getting into a war with Israel. But the bottom line is, is that those two nations you simply don't want to get into a war with. But let me get back to my point. Many were bringing up uh, different things such as all the crime and all the different wicked headlines that are in the news today. Everyone seems to think that this is uh, the coming of the Lord is soon. Well, one thing's for sure that I believe the coming of the Lord is soon, but the bottom line is it has nothing to do with the headlines. In other words, you can't look at what's going on uh, uh, you know, in, in your country or whatever the case may be and declare that's a sign of the time. It's really, it's not. I mean, this world has always been a wicked, wicked world. Have there been times that it has been, it's been better than, uh, than others? Absolutely. But the, the bottom line is it's always been a wicked, wicked world. When the Caesars ruled, I guarantee you it was very wicked then as well. And I can assure you, during World War II, this was a very wicked world. Some of the stories that I've heard, seen, and read, and some of the atrocities that happened during this time, both in World War II and World War I. But frankly, many believe that the coming of the Lord, the rapture of the church, was going to take place at the end of World War II. But again, they were looking at the headlines instead of the scriptures. And certainly the rapture of the church could take place at any time. I've always believed that scripture supports that uh, the rapture of the church is imminent, it could happen at any time, and that the purpose of the rapture of the church has always been to keep believers always looking and being prepared, both spiritually and physically prepared, for the coming of the Lord at any time. In other words, it was meant to keep you on your toes as a Christian. In essence, if you know that the Lord could come back at any time, the principle was is that you would it would keep you ready and living in the spirit if you knew that was a possibility. So there's really no signs out there to uh, point to to say, well, the coming of the Lord's uh, around the corner. But that all, but, the, but things changed when Israel became a nation back in 1948 and regained Jerusalem uh, back in 1967. 
that opened up a whole new avenue uh, for the tribulation period and frankly opened up a whole new sign that would point toward the beginning of the tribulation period. Now the main sign and number one sign of the start of the tribulation period is that Israel would be in the middle of a peace negotiation with many. And frankly, they are in that right now. In fact, let me tabulate the many right now. Number one, the European Union. Number two, the Arab League. In fact, the Arab League has said that if, in fact, Israel would give back the uh, land of uh, uh, the West Bank to the Palestinians as a uh, state and would give a little bit of Jerusalem to be their capital, and, and they really want half of it, but the bottom line is they're probably just going to get a portion of it. But they, if they could give Jer a portion of Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine, that the Arab League as a whole would agree to normalize relations with Israel and possibly allow embassies to uh, be built in both states. And a few other things have been said, such as uh, some ideas of trade or whatever the case may be, although they already are in some countries uh, in the Middle East already are trading with uh, Israel. But you understand what I'm saying is they would uh, be begin to be partners with Israel. And we know right now there are two uh, peace initiatives out there. The two main ones, I should say, are the Paris Peace Initiative and also the uh, Saudi Peace Initiative. Now, frankly, I think that the Saudi Peace Initiative is about ready to put on the back burner because I believe that the Paris Peace Plan is going to take center stage. I believe that Daniel 9, 25 through 27 states that the revived Roman Empire or the European Union would eventually be the peace bringers. In other words, the Antichrist will come out of that block of nations. And in these last days, as we speak, the European Union has taken the lead role with the United States and the Arab League in the background. And they are now center stage in charge of trying to bring peace to the Middle East. And when I say to the Middle East, I mean to it between Israel and the Palestinians. And frankly, I believe before the year's out, I think that they are going to, they're going to go from being nice and having their little conferences to it finally coming down to the U.S. threatening Israel to uh, either get into the peace process or they would no longer veto any type of resolutions that come before the U.N. Security Council. So in essence, I believe that Israel is going to be forced into becoming a peace partner with the Palestinians because they are going to be threatened by the United States and also sanctions very well may be handed down to Israel. Now it's hard to say how the Antichrist will rise up out of the European Union, but the bottom line is that the Bible says that the uh, revived Roman Empire would one day again rise up and become the peace partners that would bring, bring peace to Israel and many. And my point is that that's where we're at right now. And by the end of the year, uh, they're looking at bringing about a peace conference that I believe is going to be set up to bring a lot of pressure on Israel. And I believe there's going to be a lot of um, behind-the-scenes pressure before Israel even gets to the conference to ready them for uh, what is to be done in the latter part of this year. And don't look for Mr. Obama to be doing anything nice for Israel since this is his last hurrah and he'll be done by uh, January of 2017. I look for him to pull something off between now and then in order to put a tremendous amount of pressure on Israel. And you know, the next president who, whom we have, whether it be Hillary or whether it be Donald Trump, Frankly, I think Donald Trump is going to win, but uh, again, that's a guess on my part. But don't expect him to be any more compassionate toward Israel than uh, Obama. You know, early on in his campaign, he said that we don't even need to be in the Middle East. Simply, it's not our problem. Let them sort their own problems out. And I have a feeling that that's really the kind of uh, position that he would, he's going to take if he does win. That's why I believe that probably the European Union is probably going to take over once Mr. Obama leaves. And it would not shock me a bit if Trump um, turned the complete reins over to the European Union and said, listen, whatever I got to do in order to make this peace process happen and whatever help you need in order for it to, to become a reality, I am in it and I will do it. So he may also tell Israel, listen, you got to fight your own battles. We're no longer going to stick up for you in the UN. You need to make peace. And if you don't make peace, what's going to happen is that we're no longer going to stick behind you and uh, veto any resolutions that come up. So that wouldn't shock me either. I, you know, I just feel that Hillary, that's what she's going to do as well. So as far as Israel's concerned, I don't know if there is a good outcome for them in the uh, 2017 election. So what are some of the signs that we should be looking for? Well, we're in the middle of them right now. Number one, when Israel became a nation back in 1948, the Bible says the generation wouldn't pass away until he would come. 
And when I say he, I mean the Lord Jesus Christ. That means he would come for his second coming. Well, two things have to take place before that happens. One, the tribulation period has to start seven years earlier. And two, before that, the rapture of the church has to take place. Now, there are no signs for the rapture, but there's simply, there are signs for the start of the tribulation period. And that sign is that Israel would be in the middle of a peace accord. And not only would it be a peace accord with one, but it would be a peace accord with many. And that's exactly what's happening right now. And when this peace accord does finally come down, it will be with many. So the Bible's hit that uh, prophecy right on the head because that's exactly what's taking place right now. And the Bible also says that it would have to be confirmed and made strong by the Antichrist. And again, I believe what that's translating to is that the Antichrist is going to have to apply some pressure to not only make this peace accord happen, but also he will have to apply pressure on Israel, the Palestinians, and everyone who's involved. So even though this is an ugly world that we live in, and sin is abounding every which way we look, if you really want to pinpoint the most uh, opportune sign, it is Israel in the middle of a peace accord. The fact that Israel is now in the possession of Jerusalem again, and that this peace accord, when it does happen, will be a peace accord with many, just as the Bible has predicted. These are the characteristics that the Bible says that we'll be living in once the, uh, uh, the tribulation period does begin. And as I've said, the rapture is going to take place before then. So are we living in that day when these uh, signs for the tribulation period are around us? Sure we are. And that's the signs that you should be keeping your eyes on. And if you don't know the Lord today, today is the day of salvation. You know, the uh, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority of them will end up in a burning hell. And if you don't know the Lord today, you could be one of them. And my friend, that is a horrible, horrible reality that will never, ever die nor go away. Because once you leave this earth, once you leave this world, if you don't know Jesus, then you're going to face God one day, and you're going to be facing it upon your own supposed good works. And the Bible says clearly and plainly that all of our good works are as filthy rags. So in essence, you don't stand a chance without the blood of Jesus covering your sins. And you know, that's the, that's the reason why I am going to heaven. It's not because I'm a good person. It's because my sins are going to be covered by the Lord Jesus Christ. I accepted Him as Savior and asked Him to forgive me of my sins, and I now live for Him. I trust in His death, burial, and resurrection, and the Lord has promised me that one day I would have a home in heaven. Well, you know, you can make that same decision today, and you don't need to make, say any uh, fancy prayer, whatever the case may be, to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I know that. I know that you're the Savior and the only one that can cover my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior today. Forgive me of my sins. And from this point on, I want to live for you. I guarantee if you say that prayer or something to that extent, the Lord is going to hear, your, is going to hear that prayer and he's going to accept it. So I would encourage you today to make that uh, profession today. And if in fact you do accept the Lord as Savior, send me an email or whatever you can do to get a hold of me. And let me know that you have made a profession of faith. And you Christians, you know you need to get a hold of uh, my Tribulation Period Survival Guide and get it in the hands of every lost loved one and friend that you know. You know, I have a free version and I have a paperback version that does cost about $8. Whichever you choose, make that decision, get it in their hands. I always like to give away the paper book, paperback versions because I know that at least they'll have something in their hands when I leave. And you know, they could, they could get saved before uh, the rapture takes place. As I said uh and I'm right now in the middle of a translation uh, of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide into an additional four or five languages. And one of the editors who was editing the book uh, read the book and they decided to give their life to the Lord. So it's possible that they could come to the Lord by reading this book before the rapture takes place. And, uh, uh, you know, that's something that you've always wanted, isn't it? So I would encourage you to get a copy and give it to your friends, your loved ones, your, or wh whomever it is that you have in mind to give to and uh, do it today. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.